Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When this morning, or wherever you are on different time, we are going to share the word of God. Uh, a word of God that brings us to have a self introspection. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, as, a, as I was preparing this word, uh, there is a word that came as check-up, kwisuzuma. Uh, to check up on your life, how it is. You know when you go to the hospital, there are some exams that they require for you to do. But sometimes it's very important to go for a checkup, even there is no one who told you to do so. You just go to check up on uh, your, li- uh, your, your wealth, your health, Sorry. to see if your body is working well. Just to check that like, in, your, in your body there is nothing wrong. So if they, they notice something wrong, they can treat that. But it's so sad when you go to, to check up when the situation is already bad. Sometimes you find that uh, things have, that have gone wrong uh, and sometimes you may lose your life. Uh, or, or maybe do a surgery. And then it requires a lot of funds or finances. That is wasted. So it is so good as a Christian to always have introspection. To check if we are in a good way. Just to check like the word of God that that has come for us for this year, we are following that line. To check if what God has established, we are following that. To check if our doctrine that we are based on are based on the word of God. Because there are so many doctrines in this world. So that's why we need to check with the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are going to the word of God that we are going to read. If you have somewhere you can take some note so that if you go back home, or if you want to revise your note, just to go again what, what you've written so that you may refresh. Amen. Go to the Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Second Corinthians uh, chapter 13, verse 5. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Corinthians Examine yourself as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. And do, do, do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you unless indeed you are disqualified? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The word of God is like a mirror. We, we look ourselves in the mirror and to check if we are doing well or not. You cannot examine yourself 
we are not having uh, a reference. The word of God is there to help us to examine ourselves. I'm, I'm, I'm saying the word of God, not the religion. The word of God that created the heavens and the earth the word of God that has been always existed. That is the word of God that we need to take as a reference. What God has put on my heart that God wants us to check on I want everything that I'm going to share if you are Checking it. If you examine yourself, just give us some mark. Examine yourself. Test yourself. Yes. So it means that it's up to you to give you Yes, to give yourself a test. But also give yourself some mark. So, so whatever we're going to share, just give yourself a mark uh, out, out of 10. And uh, after this sermon, you will do the addition and to see how many points you score. And uh, I will continue Later. The first area that I want us to check. The first area that I want us for you to, that I want you to check on. Are you still led by the faith? That is the first question. I don't know if you've written this. Are you still led by faith? We're going to the book of the Second Corinthians. Chapter 5, verse 7. Kuko tugenda turongogwa We are confident, yes, well pleased rather to be absent from the body and the present with the Lord. Jesus once said, when the Son of Man will come back, will he find faith on earth? You know, we get, we get to understand the word of God through faith. Because if you use your logic, it, it will be a mystery. Because God uses sometimes something that we could qualify as weakness. Sometimes God will just use normal things to teach his people, to bless his people, so that, or, you know, maybe to elevate people. He doesn't use man's way. That's why it's required for you to have faith. Don't be someone who's led by sight. Because it will, it will be a mystery for if you. you. What we see and what we hear in this world are so many. You may be discouraged because there are some news that you've heard. But if you take away your eyes from what you've heard and you focus on the word of God because the word of God says without faith you cannot please God. We don't please God just because we have been fasting or just because we came here. But God's check on our heart if we have faith. Faith is the, is, uh, the assurance. It means, it means that there are promises of God. There is the word of God. There is what God has spoken upon your life. Maybe it is beyond what you are thinking of. What you are already required is faith. Just tell your God, even though I don't understand this, even though it's not clear, but I believe that it's you. I believe that you are with me. I believe that I shall get there. That is faith.
How about you? What is Ume, your faith? How is your faith in your life? Out of ten, how, how many mark can you give yourself? Are you a man of faith? Just give yourself mark out of ten. The second area that God wants us to check. What, what is uh, your mindset is based on? What is your mindset based on? Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to read the word of God. We're going to the Psalms. 139. 23. Thank you, David. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. Did you know as a human being you, you can get wrong with your mindset? You may say, I have this experience. I know how it is done. People who get trapped are the people who think that they have control of everything. That's why you need to ask God, search me, God. Try my heart, try my thought. So, so that if you find that I'm not I'm in the wrong way and you take me back to the right way. We're going to the Philippians. Chapter 8. Chapter 4. Where they show us how our, what our mindset should be based on. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good, uh, report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Hallelujah. Amen. Going to the Kirundi Virgin. Just check on this list. What is your position? What is, how is your mindset? Is your mindset based on the noble things? Is your mindset based on the just things? Things that are pure. Things that are lovely. That things that are good report. How is your mindset? Or you're just someone who is always negative. You are always criticizing. You are not happy when someone is moving forward. But the word of God is showing us what our mindset should be based on. This, uh, this was point number two. Just give yourself mark out of ten. The third thing. How is your relationship with the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit? How is it? How many times do you ask the Father? How, how many times do you praise Jesus? How many times are you led by the Holy Spirit? Because God is calling us to have a, to have a communion with Him. 
How is it in your life? Are you not taking one of in the Trinity to have more relationship more than others? Maybe you talk to Jesus but you forget about the Holy Spirit. Or you may someone who, asks, who likes to ask the Father, but, but it's so hard for you to be someone who's so calm to ask the Holy Spirit. How is your relationship? How, how do you commune with, with the Trinity? What kind of discipline have you given yourself just to come in with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit? In the 24 hours that God gave us, how many hours do you give God? Amen. Amen. Think about this. That was point number three. I hope that you are marking this. Number four. Are you, are you working in what God has called you to do? Hallelujah. We're going to the book of Prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah, chapter one. From verse 4 to 5. You can help us, the media team. Then the word, the word of God came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, as I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Mukirundi haravuga ngo nuko ijambo ryuhoraho rinzako riti ntarakubumbira munda nani ndakuzi kandi utarava muri yo nani narakurobanuye nagushizeho kuba uvugishwa nanje mu mahanga abanyefeso kabiri mu rongo wa 10 Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 abanyefeso Ephesians chapter 2 Chapter 2, verse 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good work, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in, in them. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you exercising your ministry? Are, are you someone who is trying to know why you have been created? Hallelujah. Amen. If you exist, or just, just to, to learn, or just to be rich, and that's going to be the end of the story. But there is a, a, a purpose that God gave you just before you were born. That is why we are all called to have a, purpose, a purposefully life uh, based on what God has called us to do. I want you to ask yourself this question. Right now, if you're standing before God, and He's revealing to you what you are doing, now, and if you really check on, on that, are you really exercising what, uh, uh, fulfilling God's will? Or are you just fighting for life? Or are you you just living? Uh, your love uh, comparing yourself to others. You're saying, oh, this person is going far. Let me try just to reach them. So this life we are living in is not competing with anyone. But it's a life that we are competing with our, our own calling. This is the only competition that we ha must have. Am I really running my race? 
Am I really living for, uh, for what God has created me to do? Just check on that. How is it? Number five. What are the fruits that you are manifesting? What are the fruits that you are manifesting? At home, what are the fruits that you are manifesting? In the, here in the temple, what are, you, what are the fruits that you are manifesting? In the society, what are the fruits that you are manifesting? How do you behave when you are far from the people that you know that you knows you. Let us read the word of God. We are going to the book of John, chapter 15. Verse 8. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. You did not choose me, but I chose, uh, chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit sh uh, should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. Hallelujah. There are, uh, there are three kinds of, uh, of seed that God is... is is calling us to manifest. The first fruit that God is, is calling us to manifest are the, are the fruits um, based on uh, repentance. Matthew chapter 3, verse 8. Matthew chapter 3, verse 8. We are going to read very quickly. Therefore, bear fruit worthy of repentance. Hallelujah. Amen. Luke uh, chapter 19. Verse 8. It says, the, the Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I, gi I give half of my goods to the poor, and I have taken anything, uh, um, I have taken anything from anyone by false as, uh, accusation. I restore fourfold. Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor, but also to take a decision not to go back to our sinful life. But, to, uh, but also when you repent, the same way as it was as Zacchaeus, there are some people that he has taken things from. This means that his richness, he, he, get to rob, he get to rob this richness. So when he repent, he didn't all, not only ask for forgiveness, but also those who that's, that he robbed, he gave them back, and also he multiplied four times. Time. This is the fruit of repentance. Hallelujah. Amen. Now let us see in our life. When I repent. 
Is there anything that I, I remain with? And then, and then I will just say the most important things are because I have asked for But also it will require you to remove what you, cause you to repent. You, have, you need to give back. Hallelujah. Amen. Now let us think about this. Take on your life. When you repented, or when you ask for forgiveness to God, is, is there anything that you remain with you and that, and that is not yours? Don't you have someone who is not yours? Hallelujah. Amen. Is there anyone that you maybe you take by force? You know what I'm talking about. Is there anything that you destroyed? God is, is asking you to restore. But in repentance, there is restoration. Hallelujah. Amen. So if you feel like you need to restore, or maybe you need some help, just uh, take an appointment with the pastors, and they will help you in that journey. It's not an easy thing, but it's enjoyable when the presence of God comes, and there is nothing that is not pure. That Amen. Life. Think about this. How, how many marks do you give yourself out of ten? That was the first category that God is asking us to manifest the fruit. Let's go to the second category. Uh, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5. Amen. Amen. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are examining yourselves in your life, are these fruit manifested in your life? Are you someone who is filled with the love that has come from Jesus? Are you someone who is filled with joy? As we like to say, a joy does not base that you what you have eaten or drank. But joy is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How about peace that God gives you? Are you filled with peace? Are you kind? Are you long suffering? Are you are you filled with patience? Hallelujah. Amen. Do you have self control? How is your character? That is the second category of the fruit. We go to the third group. Are the fruit that is manifested in our self-control. Let's go to the uh, first letter of Peter. Chapter 2, verse 12. Chapter uh, 2, verse 12. Chapter 2, verse 12. Mumahanga, Kugirango, no Kuvio of Avuga, Nabing Hinghoz Zibi, Ibi Kuwa Vianu Viza, Babona, Bizebi Tume, Bahimbaza, Imana Kumose, Ibagende. Having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good work which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. Hallelujah. Let's go to the Colossians. Chapter 1. Verse 10. Colossians. Chapter 1. Verse 
kugira ngo mugende nkuko bibere abo mwami wacu mumunezereza muri vyose mwama imbuto mu bikogwa byiza vyose mugwiza no kumenya imana that you may work worthy of the lord fully pleasing him being fruitful in every good work and increasing the knowledge of god haleluya amen dukiye kugaba ingeso ku ngeso zacu we didn't need to check our, our behavior. Just to check if you have a good behavior. Especially when we are in front of the unbeliever. It is good like when people they see you even before the introduction saying that you are a Christian or a servant of God. But when, but when people they hear what, when you are talking or what you do and all of them they come back saying they will ask you are you saved are you a servant of God because the way you are doing things is so different from what they are used to when you are with the unbeliever how do you behave? What are the characters that you manifest? That was the third category. 